Hello folks, thank you very much for joining me on today's tour. Now, question for you, what makes something unique? I guess that's open to interpretation and I love the weird and wonderful homes that we deal with, but occasionally I'll see something that just tugs at my heartstrings and the apartment I'm in today has done just that. Allow me to explain. So I've been asked to list this property that I'm in on behalf of the late owner's executors. Uh, it's a probate sale. And the moment I walked in, I just had this really overwhelming sense of calm. I can't really explain it, to be honest. The, the place is empty and needs a complete refurb. Uh, but what I can tell you is it's the first time it's been on the market for well over 50 years. So maybe it's just the good vibes of a, of a life well lived from the, the previous owner in this lovely leafy part of London. Right, let's get started. The details so far, it's a project, not too scary. We're not talking about structural, um, just a good old fashioned refurbishment. New kitchen, new bathroom, paint and paper, look at the electrics and flooring, that sort of thing. Um, what I'd really like you to focus on with me today is not what it is, in, it's what it could be. You're gonna have to channel your in, inner interior designer on this tour. We're in London's, one of London's prime residential pockets, that's Pimlico, and um, we're on the borders of Belgravia, just a five minute and 15 second walk from Victoria Station. And I know this because I've just walked it myself and timed it door to door. Um, I'll add the timed screenshots uh, in the video now as you're looking, as you're watching. As far as one bedroom apartments go, it's a big one. It's coming in just under 1100 square feet. Um, I'll leave a link to the floor plan in the video now, so you might want to pause it here. You can have a look at the, uh, the layout and, um, and see what you think. Uh, there's one bedroom, a bathroom, a nice sized kitchen, an enormous and very elegant reception room with all its original cornicing, ceiling, roses, uh, ceiling rows and mouldings. And we're up on the first floor of a beautiful white stucco fronted Regency grade two listed building. What also makes this place really special, in my opinion, is the outside space. Not one, but three private areas. You've got a balcony at the front overlooking the gardens of Eccleston Square. You've got a balcony uh, off the bedroom, and you've also got a really sizeable south-facing terrace at the back from the kitchen. I think there's scope to turn this into a two-bedroom apartment, and I'll air my thoughts as we're walking around, so as we go for a wander, I'll voice what I think is going on in my head, and you can agree with me or not. You might have other ideas, it might be a bit of a challenging one, but I've seen some of the uh, comments on other videos of mine, and I know you're a creative bunch. So I look forward to uh, hearing what you think about the places we're walking around and what you would do. So without further ado, let's get going. Okay, kicking off things down in the communal hallway. So that's the front door from the uh, road or from the, the square, Eccleston Square, and uh, you're into this lovely, uh, very well kept and preserved hallway with these original tiles which are in great shape um, really nicely looked after and then stairwell staircase which takes us up to the third oh, sorry the first floor where this flat's located it's the whole first floor of this um, this building here actually and Eccleston Square's actually got a very interesting history. The whole thing was designed and built by an architect called Charles Cubitt in the very early 1800s. He was a very, very celebrated architect and um, amongst other things, responsible for part of Buckingham Palace and Osborne House in, um, the, on the, sorry, on the Isle of Wight, which was Victoria, Queen Victoria's residence. So basically this is a very good example of a late Georgian property. Right, hallway. Um, and if we just take that, so we've just come in the front door and I'm just going to pick my way around to the left here. This is the bedroom. Now the bedroom is a very good size. You'll be able to, as you sa I said earlier, you'll be able to get an idea of the scale of this from the floor plan which I added onto the video earlier. But, you know, I'm not going to skirt around the, any, any issues here. It does need work. It's, um, it's, it's a big room, but it needs lots of love and attention. They are very old fitted wardrobes, floor to ceiling, quite deep, but you'd want to pull those out, I guess, but yeah, that's the, uh, that's the bedroom. And then this is the view from the back of the bedroom, and that's uh, one of the three terraces I mentioned earlier. And this is south facing, very, very quiet and very sunny, but there we go, you get the picture. You can, you could stand out here. You can have a little table and chair set up here. It's very, very nice size. Nice little bonus for a bedroom. 
and then back into the hallway and bathroom just to my right here again it's it's a project I quite like the wallpaper actually and you've got a obviously just the usual bath and sink there's the cylinder over there and uh, this wallpaper kind of reminds me of William Morris uh, wallpaper I'm sure the purists are gonna hate me but um, here we go and as we step out of the bathroom just to our right we've got the kitchen now this is a good size room actually um, everything works but let's be honest you're going to want to pull this all out and put a a new kitchen in or not as I will go on to go into more detail shortly but here's the kitchen in all its glory I'm gonna boiler there so it's a it's that's not a combination but there is a, a separate hot water cylinder you, I just showed you in the, the bathroom so the private rear facing south terrace and it is such a good size it really is this is all private to this apartment and as with the uh, neighboring properties you can make this nicely private screen it off add some fencing or trellising and uh, completely tuck yourself away but look at that for us that's a really sizable private terrace for something in central London okay oh um the just over the over the light well here just over there that's the balcony uh, to the bedroom right I'm going to take you inside now and we're going to push our way through to the main reception room and I'd like to discuss as we're walking my thoughts on what you could do now this is a good sized room I think you could turn this into a bedroom I think that would be a lovely addition it gives you it gives you the two bedrooms because you in my opinion would keep the bathroom just to my left that we're walking past you'd keep this bedroom that's already here and then this fantastic reception space could be a lovely open plan big kitchen reception room reception area just a nice big open plan space I'm gonna get myself tuck myself into a corner here to try and give you some idea of the scale so you've got these two big glazed doors opening out to balcony number three which we'll jump out to in a second and then this is the extent of the room the ceiling height in here is absolutely phenomenal I would say 14 feet and you still have this original ceiling rose and that but the uh, fireplace you may have noticed is also original and then you've got this ceiling uh, this molding and these uh, cornices on the ceiling right let's head out to the balcony I'm just going to stop here that is Eccleston Square now Eccleston Square is also a grade 2 listed garden park by curtilage of the the fact that the whole of Eccleston Square is grade 2 listed the building as I said is a Regency grade 2 Georgian building and when the uh, when the the new successful owner picks up their key just over there you may notice a little gate in the bush you get your gate key which is uh, a, a real prized possession because only the residents of Eccleston Square are allowed access to this garden square keeps it nice and uh, well maintained uh, it's kept really well maintained I believe the the whole thing was designed by a well-known uh, apparently a very well-known uh, garden designer but yes that's that becomes part and parcel of your ownership uh, access to this park when you purchase this property now balcony here good size balcony and room here for tables and chairs so you've got the option to sit front back middle enjoy the Sun whichever time of day or night and that's your view and that's just facing down Eccleston Square this is so London it really is I, it's got a real Mary Poppins feel about it showing my age but there you go really lovely lovely part of the world feels very special okay so that is 
the last remaining balcony, flip the head back inside. It's worth noting as well that the property does come with a share of the freehold. I believe there's eight apartments in the building. All very well looked at, or all together collectively, they look after the building very well. If you're not familiar with the whole freehold leasehold thing in this country, if you're watching from, um, from overseas, basically we've got this thing over here called leasehold where you don't actually technically own the whole thing lock, stock and barrel. I'll try and keep this as fairly sort of, I'll just keep it in layman's terms as, a, as I can. But basically you have a, uh, a situation where you'll have a number of properties in the building, i.e. flats, and the freehold is owned by somebody external and everyone owns a long lease on their individual properties. This one, however, is different the residents own the whole thing between them, lock, stock and barrel. So that is a massive advantage to, uh, to, uh, to us over here. And I think another reason this will be a very popular apartment. So there we have the tour of 63 Eccleston Crescent. Right, I'm 5'11", and I'd like to try, hopefully very unsuccessfully, to demonstrate the scale of this room by standing over the other end. It's probably been absolutely no help whatsoever, but I thought I'd try something a bit different. Um, yeah, so there we go. That takes care of today's tour, and that's enough of that. Uh, right, I hope you found this one interesting. Um, I appreciate that perhaps it's not quite got the uniqueness of some of the other places I've featured recently, but hopefully you understand why I thought it was worth the tour. The potential, the scale, the area, the, the, the air of the place, um, it offers something very, very exceptional in the right hands. It could be very, very special, it really could. The big question is, what would you do to the place? I would love to know. It's up for sale for 1.35 million. If you're interested or you'd like to know more, please drop me a line at my personal email address. That's simon.stone at uniquepropertycompany.co.uk or via the website, I'll leave a link in the description, uniquepropertycompany.co.uk. Now, one thing I would like to take this opportunity to mention, whilst I love making these videos, please bear in mind I'm not a full-time YouTuber, I'm still a very active London estate agent. The reason I mention this and, and voice this is because I can help with your property journey if you're thinking of selling or renting or you're looking to buy a unique place or whatever, please give me a shout, I would love to help. I would also like to take this opportunity to, ev to thank everybody who's liked and subscribed to my videos from previously. I'm genuinely honoured and support with the engagement from you all, um, it does mean a lot. So that's it from me from to for today's tour from Pimlico. I'm off shopping to Selfridges now. May as well make the most of the opportunity while I'm close to the West End. So that takes care of business today. Thanks again for watching. I will see you on the next tour. Goodbye for now.